morning. Welcome to Community Church Online and happy Easter. Um, my name is Kim. And I'm Jonathan. Welcome to hanging out with us for Easter. This is going to be an Easter to remember, right? Never before have we ever had Easter at home. I remember my parents like yelling at me, Jonathan, you better get dressed and get out of the house because we got to go to church. It's Easter. And it was always bonnets and wonderful dresses and amazing guys and really stuffy suits. Today, it's fleece pants. It's comfy t-shirts. Hopefully, it's nice slippers, maybe even some new uh, slippers that Easter Bunny brought us. In fact, we want to encourage you, church, to, to take a photo of your family watching our service together together in your Easter best, which is probably your pajamas that you would never expect it to be posted online. So if somebody you have to go change, that's okay, come back. We want a, an Easter ensemble photo of a whole family posted in the comment section below, letting us see uh, Easter 2020, how different it has been, but yet still we can gather together as a family. We are certainly encouraged that you all are joining us this morning. And if you are new um, to Community Church, maybe you've never even been here, maybe this is the first exposure that you've ever had to our church, we would love to connect with you in the coming weeks. And the best way for us to do that would be for you to text the word online to the number that you see on the screen. You'll get a quick response from us asking for some basic contact information. You can fill that out um, and send it back to us. And over the coming weeks, we'll just share some information with you about who we are as a church, and we'll try to get to know you a little bit better um, during this um, unusual season. And we hope that once the doors open, we get the chance to invite you to our amazing cafe and enjoy a service here in our sanctuary. We would love to welcome you, wrap our arms around you and say, hey, it's good to see another face, right? We're looking forward to that time. And we're going to have some time of worship together. So wherever you are, would you stand with me uh, or stand with us? I'm not going to be able to stand because it's going to take my head out of the shop. But would you stand as we pray and ask God's presence to inhabit our living rooms, our dining rooms, our kitchens, wherever you are to worship. And then we're going to just stay standing as we go into our time of worship. Would you join me together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you have risen and that you have overcome death, hell, and the grave. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we get to celebrate your life here in this moment. Lord, it's unusual that we're not gathered together as a corporate uh, group, but Lord, we know that wherever we are, you are in the midst. So Father, I ask that your presence would permeate our living rooms and our kitchens and our dining rooms and wherever it is that we are watching this service. Lord, I just ask that you would just allow your spirit to just bless each person. Father, encourage them and lift them. Allow them to feel that you your strength through this moment. Father, we thank you for this time that we're able to gather together online. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Enjoy our service, church. Oh, my name. 
Good morning and happy Easter to you. Today, as we worship together, I trust that this Easter, more than any other, is a most blessed and meaningful day in your life and in our life together. You know, a traditional Easter greeting in the church has been that when they gather for worship, the leader says, the Lord is risen. And the people respond by saying, the Lord is risen indeed. Now, whatever platform you're watching this on, you might have the ability to type in a comment. So what I invite you to do is in a moment, I'm going to say the Lord is risen. And, and I invite you to type the response, the Lord is risen indeed. So here we go. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Today is Easter, and we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. There are many verses, uh, many stories of the resurrection that we could look at, but if I had to distill the meaning of this day down to one verse, it would be this from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 31, that reads, But these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of John is a wonderful gospel, and there are some wonderful stories in that book. There's the introduction or the prologue, and it's in that portion that we get that verse that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. It's in there that we have that promise that to as many as receive Jesus, to them he gives the right to become children of God or the power to become children of God. It's in the Gospel of John that we hear the proclamation, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's in the Gospel of John that we have the story of Jesus turning water to wine. We have the story of Jesus talking at night with Nicodemus and saying, you must be born again. And it's in that same third chapter that we get those famous words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever lives and believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We have the story of the woman at the well. We have the story of Jesus healing the man beside the pool and saying, do you want to get well? We have the story of the feeding of the 5,000, the story of Jesus walking on water. We have the story of the man born blind in that wonderful testimony, once I was blind, but now I can see. Throughout the book, we have what are called the great I am sayings. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. We have the story of Jesus sharing a last meal with his disciples. But what's interesting is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you have the stories of Jesus taking the bread and saying, this is my body, in the cup saying, this is my blood. John doesn't record that, but John does record Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, inviting us to a lifestyle in which we don't look at ourselves as more important than others, but as followers of Christ, we follow him and we serve each other in love. And then we have the terrible, horrible story of Jesus' betrayal, arrest, torture, and crucifixion. But that's not the end of the stories, because then we come to the wonderful stories of the resurrection and Jesus appearing to his disciples. But all those stories are not there just to entertain us. They're not written to tell us that Jesus was a nice guy or a great man or a wise teacher. Those stories are written to bring us down to a single question. And that is, do we believe 
that Jesus is who he said he was and who the gospel proclaims him to be, or do we not? Do we believe, do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who delivers us from our own sinfulness? Do we believe that he is the Son of God, the embodiment of God in the flesh, that if we want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus? And do we believe that he is the giver of life, that he is the one that teaches us and leads us how to live life in his name? Do you believe in Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, the giver of life, or do you not? If you do, that is wonderful, and I celebrate with you today. But I would encourage you to be praying for your friends, your family, acquaintances, people that you know in, that, uh, in your life that need to give their lives to Jesus. And I invite you to pray for them and ask God to give you opportunities to share your witness and your faith with them and invite them to believe. But if you don't believe in Jesus, would you like to? This morning, in a moment, I'm going to uh, pray. And as I pray, I invite you to pray along in your hearts with me that at the end of this time together, we will all firmly say yes to that question, do we believe in Jesus? Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we celebrate your love and the life in Jesus' name that you bring to us today through the glory of the resurrection. We thank you for the joy of being forgiven of our sin, and we thank you for the gift of life in your name. We celebrate that, and today I pray that if there is someone who is watching this and they want to believe, that you will help them to pray this in their heart. Gracious God, thank you for forgiving my sin. I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. Come into my life and live in me and show me how to live so that I might live with you forever. And it's in the name of the risen Jesus that I pray. Amen. In just a moment, there will be somebody uh, who will share with you some further words of what you can do uh, if you prayed that prayer. Until next time, may the peace of God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey everyone, I just want to interrupt the service for just a moment and congratulate everyone who has accepted Christ for the first time or has recommitted their life to Jesus as a result of the prayer that Pastor Joel had just shared with us. It is an exciting and amazing day. There is not a better day to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Obviously because it's Easter, but the Bible says today is always the best day, whether that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Today is the best day to, to accept Christ. And we are so excited that you guys took a chance, took a step of faith and said, you know what? The way that I was living my life, I'm not real thrilled with. I'm going to go the way God wanted me to, to live it. And so we are so excited that you've asked for forgiveness. Know that Christ has forgiven you of your sins, that you're covered and, and taken care of in that regard. And that God has a plan for you and a purpose for you. And it doesn't just end with this prayer. In fact, it only begins with this prayer. God says, look, you've prayed this prayer and you've accepted me as your Lord. And, and I'm so excited for that. But I want to teach you how to continue to walk in the way that I've created you to walk. And so the best way to do that is to do something that we call disciple. Discipleship. And discipleship is a long process. In fact, as a believer now and even as a, as a leader in the church for over 20 years, I'm still going through a process of being discipled. But it's something that I do daily. And so we want to give you the tools that you need so that you can start your discipleship even now. Normally, we'd have a class. We'd have an opportunity to meet you. We'd have an opp opportunity to celebrate the fact that you've accepted Christ for the first time or rededicated your life to him. But we obviously can't do that in these circumstances. So what we'd like you to do is text the word SAVE to the number that you're going to see on the screen. That's saved, S-A-V-E-D. If you text that number to the word, to, to the text that word to the number on the screen, you'll get a text back from us. That text will have a link 
That link will give you an opportunity to connect with some videos that we have prepared for you. Each video is less than 10 minutes, but each one gives you an opportunity to understand a little bit more about this journey we call Christian life and Christian walk. And so we want you to get involved with that and connected with that. We also want to connect some of your uh, contact information so that when our doors open back up, we want to invite you to church and say, hey, come on and hang out with us. Now, we're not going to send all kinds of stuff to your house unless you ask us to. We're not going to you know, show up at your house on your front porch and knock on the door. That, that's not what we're about. We're about making sure that you find an opportunity to understand that God loves you. He has an amazing plan for your life and he wants you to walk in the purpose that he created for you. And so these videos are the first step into understanding that and believing that and then kind of grasping that in your life. And then they also give you an opportunity to, to get connected with a, a church a, as well. We just want to encourage you and ask you to, if you would text the word saved to the number that we're going to put back up on the screen here uh, and just let us know that you made that decision. You weren't alone. You weren't the only one to do it today. I guarantee you hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands worldwide, also accepted Christ for the first time in their lives. We are excited that you took this first step with us, and we are excited to take the next steps with you. Let's jump back into our worship set. Let's jump back into the time that we have together, okay? But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Psalm 23, verses 5 to 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Good morning. I'm Jared Peterman, one of the pastors here at Community Church. As we consider the people that have just taken the time to respond to an invitation to follow Jesus or grow deeper in that relationship with Him, I'd like us to consider a passage of Scripture. This is a common passage of Scripture, but it's no less important for our lives. Uh, so I invite you to listen. It's John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. God loves you so much that He gave so that you could have everlasting life. This morning, I'd like you to, to invite you to partner with God through Community Church to in, introduce people into a relationship with Jesus and, and to strengthen those who already know Him. Uh, we, one of the ways we partner with God is by showing God's love by giving of ourselves. Just this week, we offered God's love to over 40 families in a food distribution. The Busy Hands Sewing Group made masks that they gave away to those in need. And at this point, it's over 1,400 masks that they've, that they've produced and shared. Uh, we have an online presence that we've never had before, and we're trying to stay connected. Music and study ministries are continuing. Individuals are making sure others are doing okay through this pandemic. Ministry is still happening in and through the church. It's just not happening in the church building. Again, I'd like you to ask you to partner with God through Community Church to be a part of what God is doing in and through us. If you need help, contact me through my church email, and I'd love to see what we can do to show you God's love. There are three ways that you can financially partner with us. You can go to our church website and give online. Uh, you can text a dollar amount to the number on the screen and follow those text prompts. Or you can write out a check and mail it to the church. As you prepare to give and consider God's calling on your life and how you might uh, partner financially with us, I'd invite you just to pray with me this morning. God of resurrection and redemption, we offer ourselves and our financial gifts alongside of our alleluias. Use the gifts we share to offer you grace forgiveness, and redemption to a world that so desperately needs hope. Bring such an amazing hope to your church once again, that as we follow you and lead others to you, the world is overcome by your presence. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And now this morning, as you continue to worship today, I have something else. We have something else that we're going to share that I'm sure is going to bless you. Some of you may know Fuel Ministry is, is our student ministry here at Community Church. And their dedicated ministry space here in the church is called the Refinery. Throughout the summer and fall of 2019, our Fuel worship team worked hard on their worship leading skills. They were leading worship in our refinery each and every week. However, due to all that's been going on, their hard work has been put on hold. We have many seniors and hardworking students who wanted to lead worship one more time together before the end of this season, expressing the freedom they have found through Jesus and his resurrection. Please enjoy this next song played and sung solely by our youth worship team.
step into the freedom, step into the freedom we
That was amazing. Thank you so much for spending part of your Easter Sunday with us this morning. We hope you had a great experience. And don't forget to drop a picture of your family in the comment section so that we can see you all in your Easter best. Easter best, absolutely. And we hope that you continue to hang out with us throughout the week. We'll have daily devotionals. We'll have worship experiences that are posted on on all of our social media platforms as well as on our website. We just want to encourage you to not only check them out, but share them with a friend or a family member as well. Thank you for hanging out with us, Community Church. Until next time, have a wonderful, amazing day and a blessed Easter. Happy Easter.